Hi guys, welcome to the Bro Girl Experience. I'm your host, Fran, and today it is my 27th birthday party, and it is Euphoria theme. Yes, I'm a 27 year old who has a Euphoria theme birthday party. Thank you very much. That's the level I'm at in life. Um, so I recreated a Euphoria look. So this is my hair. This is my makeup. So if you want to see how I, I didn't even recreate a look. You know what? I made my own look. So if you want to see how I achieved this look, please keep watching. Okay, so here is my my canvas. I'm not naked, by the way. I have a corset on. Okay, so I'm going to start off by moisturizing the shit out of my face because it always seems to get dry again. Just move this stuff out of the way. And then I also have a pore minimizing primer um, from Pixie by Petra. Flawless and poreless primer. It's really fucking dirty, as you could see. Okay. All right, let's put that on. Let's get that going. Calm the fuck on, you little piece of shit. Okay, there we go. I think I should pin my bangs back, but. Is that going to be really annoying throughout the video? I'm not sure. Are we supposed to put primer on our eyelids? Also not quite sure, but we're going to do it. Okay, so primer's on. So for foundation, I'm going to use the my more expensive one because it's my fucking birthday. So it's obviously the tried and true. Oh, fuck. The tried and true Born This Way by Too Faced. Hopefully you can see that. And I wear, it's the 24 hour undetectable super long wear foundation and I wear it in the shade Pearl. And I usually like to put it on the back of a candle lid. So, oh yeah. We're gonna load it on today. Okay, wet beauty blender is what ties their hair on it. <laughs> I'm so clean. Okay, there's the beauty blender, and I'm just gonna pounce this all over my face. Come in nice and close for you guys. So that's the color. I've actually been getting a lot of comments lately when I put this on that it makes it washes me out, like it's too light for me, which I've never had a foundation be too light for me. Uh, so let me know what you guys think if you're good at makeup. I wanted to talk about Euphoria a little bit for whoever's interested. Um, I don't think it is the greatest show in terms of in terms of writing, but I think it is one of the greatest in terms of artistic ability shown throughout the show and that comes through in in different techniques sam levinson uses that i really uh, can appreciate as a viewer And so I'll talk about some of the times where I thought his artistic quality in the show really does hit and uh, achieves what he was trying to. So I think he did a really good job in terms of the play. I like how in the finale, the last two episodes, Lexi's play really did mirror, really mirrored their reality. And I like how they use the actors in the play and the actual characters simultaneously to act out some of the, I think, to act out some of the scenes. I think he was really successful in that. But then sometimes he tries to go for that whole artsy, oh my God, look at me. <laughs> sometimes he tries to go for that artsy style and I think it fails. For fucking example, when Rue had that dancing scene at the end of season one, no, it was a no for me. It was an overall, just please don't do that. And it could have been so good, but I think he just failed at that. Like, I think it drug on for so- Is it dragged or drug? Whatever it is, I think it dragged on for really long. Hang 
on a second. Uh, the funeral was beautiful. That, I think, did hit. It's one of those things where he takes those risks, which obviously are not going to pan out 100% of the time, but I do appreciate that he takes the risks. And I think it makes it a lot easier on him that he has an actress like Zendaya a lot of the times that is performing these ideas that he has. Because when you have an actress of that ability, it just will always make things more likely to be successful. So the artistic and creative creative side of the show is like a 9 out of 10. Um, my problem with it is mostly with the storytelling and the writing. I think the show can be a lot stronger sometimes. Okay, so now the foundation is all blended. See how it kind of washes me out? It's very light. So I'm probably going to go over this. It's kind of weird. I feel like it dries lighter than it goes on. Which, I don't know if anyone else has ever experienced that, but it seems to be my experience. I think I'm going to go in with a cream bronzer for today, just because I feel like everything is pretty smooth and not dry, because it's usually dry as fuck. I'm going with my tried and true Tardist Pro Glow palette. And I'm going to go in with shade. Is it shade? Yeah. Shade. Uh, it's pretty dark, so going to go in with a light hand and hope for the best uh okay i'm just gonna do a couple dabs a couple dabs a couple dabs like that get it on the forehead there and i actually learned that when you blend out your um contour it's a good idea to round it off over here like kind of like a little check mark um so that it doesn't drag your face down now does that work i don't know the one you stole from me yes you did you got caught bitch the thing with cream is i always feel like it made me it makes me look dirty guys Whatever. i am quickly popping in to tell you about the new cause that I wanted to highlight and that is globalfundforwomen.org and this is a feminist organization that promotes equality for all genders no matter who you are and I will read some of the aspects of their website and then you can go ahead and do more research if this topic interests you. So their vision is to envision a world where movements for gender justice have transport transformed power and privilege for a few into equity and equality for all. And so what even is gender justice? Um, their feminism is rooted in intersectionality. They recognize that women are not a monolith and experience multiple overlapping sources of oppression. The struggle for women's rights is deeply impacted by and connected to the struggles for racial justice, queer justice, immigration justice, climate justice, and so much more. The term gender justice best signifies their intersectional approach that centers the diverse needs, experiences, and leadership of people most impacted by discrimination and oppression. This approach helps achieve both equity and equality. So the organization aims to provide general operating support grants to cover the real costs of social justice work. They offer multi-year grants so that groups can plan long-term. And instead of dictating priorities, they follow grantee partners' leadership, supporting them in addressing needs, opportunities, and challenges as they arise in their own terms. Their movement-led approach recognizes grassroots people power as one of the most effective mechanisms to create and sustain long-term social transformation. So again, if you wanted to hear a little bit more about the organization, you can head to globalfundforwomen.org where you can find out a little bit more and you can also choose to donate by clicking the big purple button in the top right corner. Thank you for listening, and we'll get right back into Next that. Next up, I want to talk about the acting. Um, I'm I'm very impressed with some of the characters' acting. Others, not so much. Um, in terms of... In terms of the good actors, I think Zendaya's fucking amazing. 
and I think she's so good at conjuring emotion. Um, and for me personally, what I look for when I'm judging actresses or actors in any regard, I'm looking for them to conjure the same emotion in me. So like from watching them, if I can start to feel whatever emotion that character is supposed to be feeling, then I think that the actor did their job. And I think Zendaya is great at that. Um, I think Zendaya's whole, I think Rue's entire family, the sister, the mom are all incredible. They really drive those scenes home and um, and you feel like you're almost part of that family dealing with that hardship. Cassie, I think, I, I at the beginning I thought she was such a shit actress and I thought she was very one-dimensional. But as the show's progressed and she's been showing like that more crazy side of her, I've really been loving Sydney Sweeney's acting and bro, look at her been a blessing to watch her at any time sorry let me get in close here so you guys can see what that looks like um oh my god jacob alordi nate jacobs wow like holy shit so believable the one scene where i was like this guy is so talented is the scene where he like got pissed off at his dad and started freaking the fuck out and he started banging his head on the ground i was like okay and then in terms of the shittier actress everyone else is like pretty is is good but there's no crazy standout moments that i could think of um the only character that i'm not crazy about the only person that i'm not crazy about their acting i love the character and i love what she brings to the character in terms of style but natty i don't think is the best actress <laughs> That's just my personal opinion, but again, I think she brings style to the character, which is very important. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. I'm using the Milk Makeup um, Blush, and I'm just dabbing my brush onto it. I heard that that works better. And apples of the cheeks. I wanted to do a little bit on my nose. Get a little bit of uh, rosy cheeks. So the acting, I give, I'd give a solid seven point five for the acting, just because some of the characters are crazy, amazing, hitting all the spots that I want them to hit, and then some of the others are are good, but not, you know, the most incredible actors I've ever seen. I also forgot to put concealer on, so we're gonna do that now. I'm going in with the Maybelline New York concealer. And I believe the color has rubbed off, but probably the lightest shade. And I'm just gonna brighten up my under eyes a little bit. Do it like that. Down the center of my nose, the tip. Here, here, and here. I'm just gonna go Okay, so that is the base. Okay, now what I do, I don't know if this is right, but I do it every time. I get a really light layer of bronzer, and now I'm using the contour kit from Anastasia. It's all shitty, and I use this lighter color. Kind of, I kind of dip it in all three, to be honest, and hope for the best. And very little, I like kind of coat my whole face. And I, while I'm doing this, I like to like re-blend out what I just did and just, I feel like it makes everything more blended and set and more tanned. God knows I can always use a fucking tan. 
Okay, and then I really want to bronze my chest. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and bronze her right up. And then I'm gonna put some highlight on the parts that hit the, the light. Whoopsie, whoopsie. And to be honest, I don't know if you guys could tell, I'm not a huge makeup person, so I don't even really give a shit if it doesn't look that good. <laughs> So next up, what I wanted to talk about in the show is kind of like the social, the social causes that they highlight and some of the things that they bring attention to. I think this is always twofold depending on who's watching the show. Um, I know it's intended audience. It's probably younger kids, but it is, it's clearly not age appropriate for younger kids. Like they talk about some really heavy shit. Um, and I think that can go one of two ways. It can be very positive in the sense where if someone deals with these issues on their own, uh, they could kind of find some solace in understanding that it's a common thread, in, especially in young women and men in high school. So I think it's great in the sense where it can help people feel less alone and understand that the issues that they might face are probably quite common. And for some reason, people don't talk about them that much. Um, so I do think it's positive in that sense, but I do... Also, by the same token, think it is really fucking dark sometimes. Um, and that could be very triggering for people. So, uh, it's kind of one of those things where I think it's dependent on who's watching. And it might be good for some and bad for others. And I noticed that they don't even put fucking, um, trigger warning at the beginning of it, which I think is really strange. But I like, I love a show that can turn these really important social topics into entertainment. So, you know, because I know a lot of people don't really like to research these topics too much. So it's a good way to kind of sneak them into an entertaining subject. Okay, so now what I've been doing recently is I've been using my eyebrow pencil which i use the brow stylist definer by l'oreal in the color light brunette um, i'm gonna fill in my eyebrows obviously uh, but i also like to contour my nose with it just because i have a really thin bridge so it, it allows me to get those really sharp lines um so i will go ahead and do that now i'll probably fast forward it but you guys can see uh basically the main gist of what i do Okay, so that's the eyebrows. So I like overline them like crazy and then I brush the shit out of them to try and get them all puffy and whatnot. Oh, what it, I don't know. I've been seeing a trend that is kind of like a resurgence of the, the pencil eyebrows that used to be in in like the 80s and 90s. And I'm like, I don't care how far this trend makes it. You will never catch me disgracing my eyebrows like that like do you not realize all the people that over plucked their eyebrows and have been talking about it for the past two decades and now we're gonna do it again it's very interesting okay I think that's kind of brushed out enough fluffy enough um, and now I'll show you what I do with my nose. So first I like to go over like this. And I get that natural line on my nose. I just copy it and make it more defined like so. Okay, so once I have that line done, I like to go around like that around like that and then right underneath and you can see how it creates like that little button effect then I like to do two lines down from my eyebrow
So, see the two lines? This one's a little wobbly, but whatever. Can't be bothered. And then I just like to blend her in with my fingers. And I also, once I'm done blending with my fingers, I'll like blend it out a bit with the beauty blender. And that's what it looks like. I don't even know if I did that good. But whatever. Okay, so now let me just pounce everything on. Make sure everything is nice and blended. Okay, so yeah, in terms of the important subject matter, I think... I think the show, uh, just to expand more on the subject matter, uh, my favorite topic that they deal with is drug addiction. I think it is so beautifully portrayed and you're on that kind of roller coaster journey with Rue and her mom and her sister of what it's like to live and, and be manipulated by someone that's on drugs and also kind of like love Rue at the same time and understand her struggle um, I don't know. They just did a really great job in showing that she's not a bad person, but she just has an illness. Okay, so I'm going to start my eyeshadow. So I have this. It's tape with pores in it. And I'm just going to put that under my eye so I can do a nice um, intense wing. I'm going to do that on both eyes. I'm using my, I'm going to use a lot of highlighter today. So to start off, I'm going to lightly dust my highlighter on top of my eyelid. And I'm using the Milk Makeup Highlighter uh, in Flex Highlighter. And it's in the color Lit. So I'm going to get that on my little fluffy brush. I'm getting a shit ton of it on. And I'm going to dust that on top of my eyelid. And while I do this, I want to get into my biggest gripe of the show. And where I think they've failed the most. And that is in the writing and the plot. Uh, from what I heard, Sam, Sam Levinson wrote the wrote the script on his own and I think that's also one of the big mistakes you can make because you know when you're in a writer's room and you have people bouncing off each other I think the best story ultimately is going to win and and the majority of people will agree with that storyline whereas when you're a solo writer you know well that's great and you could use your full creative freedom I think it could sometimes make the story lack a little bit Okay, I'm just going to put this all over now that I have gotten started. So just a light layer of this all over the lid on both sides. It's like a gold almost, which it matches my top, so that's cutie. Okay, dusty, dusty, dusty. Okay, that's all on. And this is a part that I'm really fucking scared of, but we're going to try it. I have a more dense brush and I'm going to dip into a pink and try and make a wing from the pink. So I'm using the Norvina palette from Anastasia and I'm going to first go in with, with the color love, this pink right here, and I'm going to dip it in. Get a nice amount of pigment on. And I am going to just come in from the edge here. And just try and make a soft pink wing. Can you guys see that? So the tape is kind of catching anything that... travels outside of the lines but that so I'm going to start off with that lighter color and build it up I think this light is not helping my case let's see yeah 
I think it's better without that light. Okay. And I want to bring it in to about the middle of my eyelid, possibly. Okay, so now that I have that color lightly started, I'm gonna go over top of it with the shade Wild Child, which is right there. So I'm gonna get a nice, and this one's really glittery, so I think that will make it pop a little more. As you could see, that's what it looks like. Bring it in to about here. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to get my fluffy brush and try and blend it together a little bit more. Hopefully this works in my favor. If not, I'll be cheesed. Okay, so that's what it looks like. I think I need a little bit more, to be honest. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so that's what it looks like so far. And now I'm gonna move on to the other side. And I'm just going to repeat that, so I will fast forward through that. Ready? So, ready for the satisfying part? Hopefully this looks cute. Ready? Let's see. Ooh. Yes, vibes. Okay, that's cute. Maybe like not the whole tip there. Yeah, I like that. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. See this one? nice okay so this is what it looks like that's what it looks like so now this is gonna be the hard part i bought these crystals off amazon and i'm gonna go in with the pinks in the smallest and i'm going to try and create like a little semi-circle vibe but before I actually, before I do that, I'm going to do my mascara because I don't want to f anything up and I want to leave that to the last minute. Just thought of that. So now we're going to, and just add highlight everywhere. And it's the same highlight as before. And I'm doing it up here. That's what it looks like here on the ball of my nose. Up the middle of my nose here and then most importantly I wanted to add a shit ton on my chest like up here and I'm gonna do my collarbones like so And my shoulders and just like little circly swipers like that. I don't know if you guys can hear my dog eating her actual ass behind me but I apologize for that okay we are glowing with that highlight all right and now I'm going to go in with my lip liner I'm using Essence soft and precise lip pencil long-lasting And it's in the color where the f is the color Frankfurt no <laughs> That's where it's from All right, it's in a red color <laughs> It's just like a deep red shade and I'm gonna line my lips with this Put 
that looks like. And now I'm gonna go in with the, okay, it's called Buxom, Buxom? Wildly Whipped Lightweight Liquid Lipstick. And it's in the shade Instigator, and that's what it looks like. And I'm going to top it with this. Do I like this? I think I do, yeah. That's what that looks like. Okay. Now that that's all done, I'm going to go in with the best mascara there is. Don't bite me on this. It's telescopic. Um, I'm going to coat my lashes like absolute crazy and then we're going to go with the diamonds and then we'll be done. That's one coat. That is two coats. And that's like 5,000 coats. Let that dry. I'll be back to put on the glitter. Okay, so this is going to be really f***ing hard and I will just speed it up. But I'm going to try my best to do these goddamn sparkles. Let's see. Okay. So I'm going to dot eyelash glue on with a, a bobby pin. And I'm going to put the crystals on top of that. So we'll do one here. One there. Here and one here and one there. So you could see I just dotted the eyelash glue on, and now I'm gonna wait for it to get all tacky before I put on. The crystals, and I also want one on the inner corner. What I learned so far from trial and error, if you're doing it, don't use your eyelash scissors. Use one of these tweezers, because it works a lot better. It's, a, it's hard to pick them up, but I feel like it works better. So all I'm going to do is pick up each crystal. It's really hard. And place it where I want it. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Look. There's the nail glue. Okay, that's what it looks like. Okay, that's the other side, and I think I'm gonna add one more right here. That is the crystals. So this is pretty much the finished look. I'll get you in nice and close so you can see the final look. So that was this episode of turning myself into a euphoria character. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I am grateful for another year doing this podcast and I hope I can carry it on for many more years to come. Thank you for watching the Broad Girl Experience and I will see you next week for an all new video.